investing. Today we have a live show covering the latest in investing in Tesla. And today we have especially big news. Elon Musk has announced that Tesla is opening production, restarting production at Fremont factory today. And this is against the Alameda County rules and regulations. And Elon might get arrested. He even tweeted, if he gets arrested, if anyone gets arrested, let it be him, right? He wants to be the person. Anyways, today we're going to take a, a deeper dive into what's going on with Tesla's Fremont factory and Alameda in California and um, try to get some insight and clarity. All right, so we have um, big news. Tesla restarts their Fremont production. If you can give me a thumbs up in the live chat, if you can hear this okay. Um, as we do these live shows, it's a great opportunity for you guys to um, partake in the live chat. If there's any abusive people, go ahead and report them. And at the end of kind of my prepared remarks, we'll go ahead and take some questions from viewers. All right, so Elon Musk today, um, actually this afternoon, um, at 1.36 p.m. Pacific Time says, Tesla is restarting production today against Alameda County rules. I will be on the line with everyone else. If anyone is arrested, I ask that it, it only be me. So here's um, Elon Musk today saying that, um, yeah, Tesla's going to reopen Fremont factory. They haven't worked out an agreement with Alameda yet. Regardless, Tesla is just going to go ahead and open up um, production. All right. What's the background with this? So we have the background is Alameda County has a shelter in place order from March 16th to May 4th. And then it was extended again and it was extended to, extended to May 31st. And with this time this past week, the entire state of California has opened up to interstage two uh, manufacturing um, or stage two in their opening plan. And so manufacturing is allowed in the state of California. However, in the Bay Area and Alameda County, um, they're not allowing Tesla to start their manufacturing, right? So there's this big kind of tension going on. Um, on Thursday night, Governor, Governor Newsom right, um, tweeted out that, hey, they're going to approve manufacturing in California to start. Elon said, yes, we're going to do it. He emailed his employees, say we're going to start on Friday tomorrow. And then on Friday, Alameda just shut the door. They said, hey, you must not reopen. Um, and they basically said, Tesla, you know, shut, uh, shut down your plans. You can't do it. And then on Saturday, um, Tesla says, or Elon uh, tweeted saying that this is the final straw. Tesla is going to move their headquarters and future programs to Texas and Nevada immediately. And even if we retain Fremont manufacturing activity at all, it will be dependent on how Tesla is treated in the future. All right, so there's a bunch of big news here, um, right? Elon is saying we're going to move our headquarters for three months. It's up in the air, right, on, on how we're treated. And then on Saturday, um, Elon announces that he's going to, uh, Tesla's going to file a lawsuit against Alameda County. And shortly after um, he tweeted, uh, Tesla did file a lawsuit in the Northern District of California. And it's against Alameda County. And here's Elon Musk saying, I'm not messing around. Absurd and medically irrational behavior in violation of constitutional uh, civil liberties, moreover by unelected county officials with no accountability, needs to stop. Um, so yeah, so he's, he's saying he's saying like yeah he's really serious about this stuff right this lawsuit and getting a, a Fremont's production up uh, back up and running. All right, some highlights with the lawsuit. I went over this lawsuit. I've linked it in the video description below. You can read the whole thing. It's about 18 pages or so. Um, a few points is that Tesla is saying that in the in federal guidelines there's something called critical infrastructure and manufacturing of vehicles of cars and energy etc all falls under critical infrastructure and um, Tesla's arguing that hey, first this critical infrastructure shouldn't be subject to these economic lockdowns and the second California in their shelter in place order specifically omits right the federally uh, approved right critical infrastructure so in their state right shelter and order place California says these federally critical infrastructure businesses should remain open and then this past week the state also went a, a step further ahead and said, and said not just the federally critical infrastructure, right, but also all manufacturing can now start to be open in stage two. This was this past week on Friday. Another point in the lawsuit is saying that Alameda County's own 
FAQ right on their website is saying that right manufacturing and support of electric of vehicles are allowed in their shelter in place um, order. And then lastly, Tesla goes into the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution saying that they're allowed due process and a few other points with the Constitution. All right, so the drama continues this past week. It gets really big, actually, this past week. The, the county supervisor, Scott Haggerty, now he seems to be the, the main person kind of like organizing kind of all of the county's response and bringing people together. And the New York Times had an interview with him, and he kind of, I believe, went really far to get really personal and get um, extended into this whole discussion. And he says, um, I get threatened all the time. Um, and he was asked about, you know, uh, Elon Musk or Tesla suing them. And he says, at that point, it does slow down conversations between my contact at the plant and myself, right, when they talk about lawsuits. And then he goes on and says that Elon Musk could have spent time enjoying his new baby and giving me and my staff a couple more days and his plant would have been open on May 18th, right, he claims. And he says, am I somewhat sympathetic with Tesla? Yes, I am. Am I sympathetic to what? to the way Musk is treating people? No. Right, so here we have some politics. We got some personal like um, things going on here with the county supervisor, at least according to this New York Times article. First, he doesn't like the way Elon Musk is treating people. Right. So this is a big issue for this county supervisor. And then he says he's somewhat sympathetic. Right. So he, he it sounds like he's kind of wishy-washy in terms of right his real sympathy toward Tesla. And then he's He's giving Elon Musk right personal advice here. He's saying, "Oh yeah, Elon, you should um, spend more time with your baby, right? Don't worry about this stuff. Um, we'll take care of it." But here you have like a bureaucratic right government who's probably dragging their feet, taking a super long time, having all sorts of delays, telling Elon Musk right and Tesla who has right tens of thousands of employees that hey you don't don't worry about right don't worry about stuff we'll take care of it eventually right and even this may 18th date it probably wasn't even set in stone it was kind of like this oh goal date of we might right be able to start some type of right you know prepare preparations or even production but um all of that stuff is up in the air and so all this stuff actually just um escalates the situation Today, this morning, uh, the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, he backed Elon Musk in an interview. He says, um, I agree with Elon Musk. He's one of the biggest employers and manufacturers in California. California should prioritize doing whatever they need to solve these health issues so that he can open quickly and safely. All right, so what does that mean? It doesn't really mean much, right? Because actually a lot of this stuff happens on the local and state level. And so the federal government is kind of, you know, giving it to the local and state reps. Although it would probably help if the federal government did come in and actually try to broker some type of deal. All right, the California governor now, Gov uh, Gavin Newsom, on Monday was giving a press conference and he was surprised to hear that Tesla had opened up the factory for production. Um, and he says, I'm trying to monitor hundreds of thousands of businesses all throughout the California. Now, throughout this talk today, we're going to be talking about, right, um, bureaucracy right this is kind of like kind of what I think is the key theme going on here here go, the governor says hey I've got thousands of businesses right that um, I'm trying to monitor and figure out I've got thousands of issues right one company is not gonna you know take up all my attention and so you have an excuse right I have too many things on my plate to really worry about all this other stuff later on the governor comes across and he says hey I support Tesla but where's the action right what's what is specifically the governor of California really doing to help Tesla's case in this situation I don't know it's yet to be seen um, also on Saturday you have the Fremont mayor sorry it's a uh, mayor oh uh, backs Tesla and she says the city is prepared to support Tesla as soon as they are able to resume automatic automobile manufacturing operations and are committed to a thoughtful balanced approach so here the mayor is saying hey I support Tesla but it doesn't really mean anything because it actually it, it all the power uh, goes to the county right the Alameda County that sets the rules and even California is deferring a lot of the power to the county as well all right, we have a California Assemblywoman, uh, Lorena Gonzalez, right, over the weekend, scorns Elon Musk, she says F Elon Musk. Um, she has some type of, I guess, reasonings, but she wants to get this attention out. And Elon Musk replies to her, has message received. Like, all this stuff is getting, like, out of control over the weekend. 
Then Elon Musk over the weekend gets into a feud with Robert Reich. And he, Robert Reich is um, a Berkeley professor. He was a former Secretary of Labor under uh, President Clinton. And he's a big proponent of some very liberal causes. And he goes against, you know, he attacks kind of Elon Musk. He says, Elon Musk threatens to take away people's jobs unless he's allowed to risk their health. Capitalism at its worst. And then you have Elon Musk going with some uh, personal attacks. He says, in Russian, idiot, sorry, boring idiot in, in Russian. And then in a later tweet, he says he thinks he's a boring idiot. Now, all this stuff of uh, going into kind of like name calling and personal attacks, I think all of this actually um, worsens the situation. It doesn't help communicating anyway. It just uh, riles up uh, personal um, people's emotions and just people take sides and it's kind of like more of a shallow right attack I'd rather see some actually clear discourse happening all right so here's one of the key issues that is going on right now and one of the reasons why Tesla is forced to open up uh, why Elon feels that way the first the big reason is because Alameda County and it's not just Alameda County but this is a local government right it's a county of 1.7 million people and typically bureaucracies are very slow right these are slow moving entities this isn't a private like startup or, or any means like speed doesn't mean anything actually and in fact speed actually is is a disadvantage in some ways for these governments because the faster you go the more you rile up people and people get people get upset so actually these local governments and federal too have learned to move slowly right and they operate from consensus Right, and that's the key thing. You go slow, you have a ton of meetings, right? You hold dozens and dozens of meetings. You talk to this department, this department, this rep, all sorts of stuff, and you operate out of consensus, and it takes forever, right, to make certain decisions. And these counties and local governments have thousands and thousands of businesses and issues to deal with. And so Tesla is not, right, one of their main issues. Like, they have a, a ton of other things. Now, when Tesla gets to the front of New York Times, right, and your county supervisor is interviewed and the whole nation is looking at it, now it becomes a top priority for Alameda County. But as of last week, no, Alameda County had a ton of other issues, right, to deal with. And further, county and local governments aren't optimized for crisis speed. And what I mean by this is in terms of crisis, especially in pandemics, you need to move fast, you need to move decisively. And this is one of the big issues with governments and why they botched this whole coronavirus thing is because they weren't able to move fast with testing. They weren't able to move fast with masks. They weren't able to move fast with like figuring out protocols, right, for transportation, for health, etc. And so these local governments, because they're not optimized for speed, they're taking their time. And this is killing businesses, right? It's wasting billions and billions of dollars because they just can't get up to speed. All right, in Alameda County, I went through this before, the hospitalizations have flatlined and are starting to go down. And then their daily cases have flatlined and are starting to go down as well. Now, it's not ideal where there's not like no cases right now. There's still, you know, decent amount of daily cases. So. Um, Alameda County is being especially cautious right now. They don't want to see a big flare-up, right? And that's a big thing. But on Elon's side, um, and this is Tesla's perspective, um, in Tesla's pr perspective, back in March, they didn't want to shut down in the first place. They thought that they could run a smooth, a healthy, safe environment for their workers back in March all, th all throughout April. However, Tesla decided to compromise. They decided to, A, you know, we'll, you know, give in, you know, for now. We don't agree at all with, you know, shutting down our factory, but hey, we'll give in because we want to, you know, help out everyone. However, when the um, lockdowns were extended in California, the state decided to open a manufacturing, but the county decided to shut Tesla down further. Tesla basically said enough is enough, right? This is out of control. And there's further things in Tesla's perspective. What's stopping the county of Alameda from doing further shutdowns in the future, right? It could just if there's a flare-up, then the county could shut down the factory again. Let's say this winter, what's stopping Alameda County from shutting down Fremont Factory for two or three months in the winter? So there's a lot of uncertainty going on. Further, there's a lot of suppliers that are counting on Tesla. There's not just tens of thousands of jobs in Tesla that's you know counting on this uh, Fremont Factory and the revenue that it provides, but there are tens of thousands of other employees that are connected to the Tesla supply chain that are relying on Tesla getting their production up. And then lastly, there's the mission perspective, right? Like if 
Tesla is delayed a few months here, a few months later, you know, in the winter, another few months. Let's say production even is delayed six to eight months, and they're shut down. We're talking about not just billions and billions of dollars, not just six to eight months, but we're talking about perhaps years of lost like progress toward Tesla's mission and vision to transition the world to sustainable energy, right? And so this is probably the most important point, right, that Elon and Tesla is, are, is thinking about. Next, I want to go through Elon's perspective. Again, this is all speculation, but I think it's important to kind of separate Tesla with Elon right now because Elon actually also carries some of his own personal opinions in this perspective. It's about Tesla, but it's not just about Tesla, these lockdowns. It's about freedom and the freedom that's at stake right in our country. And it's about some practical common sense. Um, now, I don't agree with Elon Musk with um, with his whole entire view of coronavirus. If you've watched my previous videos, you would have seen it back in March, I argued for a smart and comprehensive plan that kind of modeled off of South Korea and Hong Kong and Taiwan. These certain countries in East Asia, they didn't have to do actually lockdowns, right? They're actually, the economy continued to, to stay open. Like I have a few friends in South Korea that they're able to continue to do their daily life. Like go to supermarkets, go to stores, go to restaurants, etc. There are different protocols and smart action. Everyone's wearing masks, right, from, from day one. And these countries were able to mitigate the spread of the virus, get people to continue to work without having these extreme extended shutdowns. And I think that's what kind of common sense is all about, right? That's what um, moving comprehensive and smart. And I think Elon is frustrated that there isn't more common sense. Last, I think with this great um, damage or economic damage and cost that's being accrued by these politicians and officials who are kind of doing slow responses, reactionary responses, and these shutdowns are hurting a lot of people, right, across not just California, but across the country. And I think from that perspective, right, that's Elon's perspective on why he's very kind of riled up about this whole um, lockdown situation. Now, I've heard this from a few viewers. Is Elon bluffing about moving F Fremont factory? Like, is it just a play for him to have upper hand? And I think Elon Musk continues, he prefers to keep Fremont, right? He prefers to hold production there. But Elon Musk, like, he's not going to say something if he doesn't mean it, meaning Elon Musk will move, will move Fremont production if he has to. And I think this is a real serious question that we need to look into. I talked about this briefly in my last video. In order to move production to Nevada, they need to create space. They need to move their stamping, right? Their stamping of the big kind of body parts. They need to move their body in white whole section, which is all their robots and welding. They need to move their paint shop, and they need to move their whole general assembly lines. In addition to all this, they need to move all of, right, there's at least a bunch of their kind of supporting, right, uh, uh, manufacturing of all different parts of class of of dash of seats and all this stuff and and even their other suppliers right need to actually uh, start moving so it's a huge process i estimate a three to six month process if they were to stop production right and completely move but on elon time i wouldn't be surprised if he decides to move and completely stop production that in two or three months they can be able to move to nevada the cost though is that fremont would have to shut down completely right and we would have another two or three months of complete zero production and zero revenue from uh, Tesla. All right, we're going to go into some questions and comments now. If you have a question or comment, um, I want to encourage you, put it in capital letters, uh, question, uh, colon, and that will help me to look in the live chat comments um, from here on out, and I can hopefully um, be able to address as many questions as possible. Now, on Twitter, I gave a, a, a a poll and I said, hey, do you agree with Elon Musk's decision to restart Tesla's fam, uh, Fremont fa factory production today? And we had about 88% of the people out of almost a thousand people voting um, said that they agree with Elon Musk. All right, Emmett Pepper says, I believe Elon Musk would be happy to get arrested and make this into an even bigger national story than it is. More attention, the press, the better the net outcome support for Tesla, in my opinion, and his. Yeah, actually, uh, I actually would agree with Emmett here. Um, yeah, Elon Musk is very principle-based, and at times, you know, when he believes in something, he's very obstinate about it. And I think this is one of those issues, and he's willing to be arrested because this is something, first, that he believes in, and second, he thinks it's going to probably send the right message, right, that, hey, something needs to be changed. He's willing to, to take the hit. 
All right, Tesla Leon says, can Tesla sue for damages if they win the current lawsuit against Alameda County? For example, they've been shut down for too long and sue, sue for lost revenue. Yeah, I mean, like anything is possible. I think, sure, they could sue for damages, but that's not what the real the lawsuit is all about. The lawsuit really is just wanting to start production again. And the other thing is with Alameda County, like they don't have much money, right? These local governments, like like they're just all struggling. And so for any company to try to go ahead and sue for billions of dollars and actually win, and you know, that's just a PR nightmare. So I don't think Tesla wants to get into that at all. They just want to be able to start production. All right, Artie says, hey Dave, how fast should Tesla move its manufacturing to a new location? All right, ideally Tesla doesn't need to move their production. Ideally, Alameda County relents. Now here's the question. Is Alameda County really going to relent? Now I think there's some risk here that Alameda County actually continues to fight Tesla. Um, there's a lot of strong heads involved, right? And there's a lot of ideological like background between like these strong heads. And it could get kind of messy. However, on the other hand, it could, and this is probably the mo most likely scenario, is that they're able to work out a compromise. Tesla is able to prove they have the safety protocols, right? And they're able to continue, right, to ramp up production. All right, giddy up, Tesla says, what risks should we be thinking about as a result of the Fremont situation? All right, so I think in this situation, you've got probably a 75 to 80% chance that this whole thing kind of blows over in a week or two, that... Alameda, they figure out right a solution with Tesla. Governor Newsom gets involved. Even the White House starts to get gives some pressure, and everyone works out an amicable solution, right, for Tesla to to ramp up production. Maybe it might take a few more days. Maybe Tesla says, okay, fine, we we stop production for a few days or a week or so, and then we start ramping up production. Maybe a little bit slower than expected, but they do so. And I think that's the most likely uh, scenario. Now, there's still probably a 15 to 20 percent chance, in my opinion, that things don't turn out that way and things escalate Alameda County plays hardball and there's you know probably a good five or ten percent chance in my opinion at this point which could change that Tesla actually just says forget it right we're gonna start moving our production to Nevada and in that case like you're having a longer right loss of revenue right and you might see the entire Q2 without any revenue from Fremont and you might see a good month or two in Q3 so the short-term hit to Tesla's revenue could be substantial. However, it could mitigate any future risks where uh, Tesla feels like, hey, maybe California will shut down their factory anyways coming this next winter if there's a flare-up. So there's pros and cons to that. All right, Transform Invest says, when a court reviews Tesla's lawsuit against Alameda County, what will be the verdict and how long will it play out? All right, um, I personally think, yeah, this... It all depends. I think there's going to be a compromise, right? A solution worked out in the next week or two, um, hopefully within the next few days. If that's not the case, yeah, this lawsuit actually goes to court and the judge, you know, does a verdict. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I personally think that the lawsuit is secondary because I think um, it's in both parties' interests to try to figure this out quickly, right? And I think the PR kind of damage on both sides is going to be pretty immense the longer this goes and it's just going to be a very divisive issue i think um yes yeah, it's, it's in both best cases just to figure it out the lawsuit i think was to put more pressure on alameda to say hey we're serious and this is the last resort you know of what we're going to have to do all right masa yaku says hey dave i have a question is there any indication that Tesla government will allow Tesla to sell EV direct, EVs directly in Texas? Anyone from Texas government officials have spoken yet? Thank you. Yeah, so as you probably know, Texas doesn't allow Tesla to sell cars directly right in Texas. People have to order online, complete the purchase like as officially legally in California and get the car delivered right to service center in Texas. My opinion is that Elon probably has received indication from Texas lawmakers, the governor, whatever, that Tesla's or Texas is willing to change the laws, um, especially because I believe Tesla is already in negotiation to set up a gigafactory in Texas, probably near Austin. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, Randy Sh Chavez says, how, um, what are the short-term effects of moving out of California? What will it be on their finances? Yeah, it all depends on the pace of move, right? If it's a drastic kind of like we're shutting, shuttering Fremont right, tomorrow and moving everything to Nevada, 
right, in the next two or three months, we're going to see no revenue, right, for the next two or three months. That's the short-term effect. Now, there's another outcome where it's like, okay, let's move some of our production equipment over the next six months to Nevada to set up a new line. Let's, let's say, let's start Model Y, let's do a Model 3 line or something. Let's maybe keep Model S and X here and some Model 3 and Y. In that case, the short-term effects are less pronounced because it's more spread out, right? So it all depends on the timeline and how fast or how slow Tesla moves out of Fremont. All right, how not to get into the trap of being biased? For example, I see myself approving everything Elon does simply because I admire him. How can I stay objective and invest in Tesla objectively? All right, I see this a lot. I think this is kind of like one of the main um, kind of points of this channel. And I see a lot of people when they are hit with issues like this, especially they're emotional, right? They're very like timely and it's a hot spot. It deals with a little bit of politics, a little bit of principle. And you have people very divisive on this and they come up with very strong kind of judgmental conclusive, right? answers to these issues and so on one hand you have people just 100 percent right support elon and say go 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 and and what i don't like about some of this side is sometimes it'll be very lewd right you have like personal attacks on people who don't agree and all this stuff it's very emotional and on the other hand you have people that just lash out on elon and says like you know the worst things about him and, and completely go against him and you have very few people actually trying to understand the situation actually understand the nuances understand the situation from different angles get to the essence of really what's going on like what is the tension what is the conflict right and i think um kind of my input on this is, and I think that's why I, I talked about kind of bureaucracy in the beginning. And I think if you look at it from the angle of bureaucracy, where you have these local governments who are primed and trained to move slowly and by consensus. In a time of crisis, right, they're not equipped. They're not, they don't know how to move fast. And moving fast is key, right, to responding in a crisis, right? And Tesla needs to move fast. They, and, um, and there's some tension, right? And I think that's probably um, one of the key angles we need to look, look at this situation. Um, yeah, so um, I guess um, my advice in this regarding this is to yeah continue to, to to think deeply, right? To challenge assumptions and to dialogue and discourse. Like for example, what we're doing in this channel. Go ahead, ask more questions, and and we'll get more to more deeply into thinking objectively about situations. All right, David says, how has your perspective of Elon changed in the past week? In particular, what do you think about Elon willing to be arrested in the place of workers? Yeah, I think in my opinion, um, Elon like I, my opinion hasn't changed. Um, about Elon that much over time, um, at least recently. I think Elon, in a lot of ways, is very principled. And he really looks at things as like, you know, he looks at the whole picture, the pros and cons. He's thought through a lot of these ramifications of what it takes to move the headquarters, what it takes to move the Fremont factory. Um, this isn't just a rash decision on Elon's part. There's a lot of things going on that we don't know about. On the flip side, I think there are some weaknesses like Elon isn't perfect and there are times where he gets emotional you know he gets a bit short-sighted and I think in terms of uh, relational type of interactions where people criticize him at times he t tends to lash out like personally and it just tends to balloon the, and escalate the situation I think in the wrong direction and I think like overall the I think the thing I'm taking away from this situation personally is that Elon really is able to make the big decisions right that he, that he needs to make like he's willing to close down the entire Fremont factory and I trust Elon in the sense that he's worked out and thought through the situation because that's kind of his process that's his habit that's his you know what he's trained to do and I think in the bigger picture that's going to serve Tesla well right the ability to make big decisions right take the risks um, you need to take um, at times you're going to make mistakes right but in the bigger picture if you continue to do it correctly you're going to um, probably work out in the end all right, Daniel Dilger says, please talk about the other bubble, which is all against Tesla, like Montana Skeptic, and address their concerns. Even better, announce that you will invite them on one of your upcoming streams. Yeah, so uh, as you probably, guys probably know, there's a bunch of people who are anti-Tesla, um, Tesla shorts. There's a whole bunch of uh, reporters that are also like kind of aligned with these people. And there's a lot of like political like s stuff going on, and people are aligning against you know Elon and Tesla in different ways. Um, regarding kind of the, the Tesla shorts, right? There's a bunch of people. 
Now, I've tried my, you know, what I could do to listen and to read and to learn about their arguments. The big problem I have with most Tesla shorts is that they have a vitriol, like a real hate, like an emotional bias against Elon. And, um, and because of that, I think it really tends to um, affect and cloud their judgment. And then because of that, all of their arguments are in a way biased and, and twisted. And so I love to talk with people like rationally. I love to talk with people rationally about Tesla. And I'm the first one when people give like high pie in the sky valuations where I'm you know, willing to take a stand and say, hey, I think that's way too high, right? I think you're just being unrealistic, right? And so I'm willing to take a stand against that stuff and I'm willing to listen to people, A, who don't have, let's say, the whole, you know, Tesla hyperbole, emotional, rah, rah, right, approach. But in the case where people have this, I think, emotional bias, this like, you know, these issues that go beyond just, you know, objective reasoning and thinking, I think it's difficult in a lot of ways to really converse and have a productive dialogue. But nevertheless, you know, that's what I think right now. All right, Jonathan Ward says, do you think in five to 10 years, Tesla will become more of a software company than a hardware company? Yeah, I think um, the software becomes more and more important because of artificial intelligence, because of robotaxi, all of this stuff, right, increases in, is import, in importance and becomes a bigger and bigger part of the value that Tesla adds. Um, will it become more of a software company than a hardware company? I think for the next 10 or 50 years, Tesla is a combination, right? Like they have great hardware, their cars, etc., and their software become more important, but I think it's kind of a hybrid. It's kind of like Apple in, in, in a way, right? The iPhone is still hardware and software. Sure, Apple is trying to move more to services, but it's gonna take a very, very long time before Apple is really like a software company, not a hardware company. All right, let's go ahead and um, take some of your questions. All right. Uh, Jesus or Jesus Plaza says, if Tesla stock hasn't come down today, is there anything that could bring it down? Please talk more about other stocks that you're liking at the moment and why. Yeah, it's um, amazing um, that, um, actually, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, it's amazing that Tesla stock is, um, not just Tesla, it's like if you look across the board, like look at Microsoft, look at NVIDIA, look at Apple, look at Amazon, look at Shopify, you'll see a ton of stocks that are like already at their all-time highs. And the NASDAQ is already higher now than it was at the beginning of the year, January 1st, right? Just a few months ago. It's amazing. It's almost like the COVID crisis never happened for some of these stocks. And there's a lot of different explanations. Like for example, in a crisis like this, it kind of shows who the winners are, like who are the strongest companies. And a lot of these strong companies are really strong right like you look at their earnings reports i encourage you look at their quarterly reports look at their annual reports like it's like look at some of these companies like wow they're actually strong earnings um and still the economy is still running right online especially and these companies are still taking advantage of it and so there's different factors and including the fed that we need to talk about or look into more all right um marty says why is the state so inept um they can't overrule the country yeah i mean there is an issue, right? I mean, it's not, in my opinion, it's the, the government is not trained, it's not set up. The infrastructure, the culture is not set up for fast paced, right, crises. Um, it's a bureaucracy, right? They're meant to preserve the status quo. It's not meant to rile up things, right? Um, yeah, the local governments um, are in a way outmatched for, for a fast paced uh, crisis like this. All right, Mayan says, will they arrest Elon? Like, I don't, think that they would arrest Elon personally because what does, you know, Alameda County really get out of it, right? And I think it's up, actually, Alameda County is giving it to the police department. So does the police department really want to arrest Elon? Like, what is that really going to do? And what if, like, Elon, like, gets, like, coronavirus COVID in jail and he gets really sick? I mean, this is just a disaster. Right? No one wants a disaster like this. Um, I don't think they'll um, arrest Elon. I'd be very, very surprised if they did. All right, what are your thoughts on Nikola Motors, Hydrogen Semi, and the future of their stock? Yeah, Nikola Motors, like, you know, I haven't followed them too closely, but, you know, from what I've seen, they tend to have a lot of, like, show, right? They're, like, you know, claiming a lot of things, like mileage and lots of things, and they keep on changing their opinion. And, and in my opinion, there's a lot of talk, right? Every company can talk the talk. But when it comes down to it, who's going to actually, you know, walk the walk? Like who's going to release the products that people love 
and are fanatical about it. And so that's my test. Say, A, release a product that people are absolutely in love with, right? And then we'll start talking about, like, you know, if you guys have a chance or not. All right, John Keller says, Fremont closed by 2025. Well, we'll see. Uh, Nail Guy TV says, I'm going to get arrested to do time with Elon. Well, yeah. Um, question, Giga Texas deal done? Yeah, I don't think it's done or, or unless unless te um, Elon would have announced it, right? I think it's still negotiations. I think Elon is kind of is, you know, he thinks the negotiations are almost complete. Right? There's probably a few things left and, you know, he, he in his mind, uh, he wants to build it, in my opinion. All right, what type of actions can Alameda take against Elon Musk? Yeah, I mean, you know, they could do a lot of stuff, right? They could say you're doing it illegal. They could, you know, uh, in a way, they could, you know, have the police department or encourage the police department to arrest him or there could be fines, etc. I think all of that stuff doesn't matter. Like, no one wants uh, Tesla to be punished, right? No one wants them to pay money. No one wants jail time, right? They just want, right, um, Alameda wants to be cautious, right? And Tesla wants to move faster. All right, Marty says, why can't the state overrule the county and resolve this issue? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the state really is the same thing. It's a bureaucracy, slow, slow moving consensus, consensus, consensus. And they've got thousands of other businesses and issues to deal with. Who has time, right, for another business up in NorCal? Um, if so, if they did, they could really just like, hey, you know, really work out things, right, quickly um, and find a solution, right? And I think in a lot of ways, as this gets more a uh, higher profile and politicians feel like their careers are at risk, then we start to see the, the speeding up, right, of the pace of negotiations and stuff, right? That's how stuff works. All right, Asher uh, Weiderman says, how do you view the 64% demand decrease in China? Yeah, so in April, Tesla delivered, I think it was between three and 4,000 cars in, um, in China that was significantly less than in March. And there were a few factors. Um, some people are saying hey, people were already waiting for the price decrease. So Tesla had decreased right, the price of the Made in China Model 3 to meet some incentives just last week. And so people were waiting for that. And some other people were waiting for the long range. I'm not too concerned. I think um, Tesla China demand is healthy, especially when you lower the price and it gets down to, I think it's between 38,000 and 39,000 USD. Um, in China after the incentives for the Made in uh, China Model 3. And I think that's super competitive with, with any car in that price class. I'm not worried about uh, Tesla demand um, in China. All right. Uh, do you think the state of Indiana would be a good fit for Tesla production? Yeah, you know, I think, I don't know about Indiana personally, but I think any state that um, can really get behind, you know, make, make Tesla's, uh, life easy. Elon and Tesla just want to be, they're kind of like, they just want to move fast, right? And like, for example, with Shanghai, Shanghai let them move fast, right? And that's all they, they're wanting, right? They're not wanting, let's say, a, a ton of incentives per se. The best incentive is, A, help us move fast, right? Help us get over the regulations, the permits, all the stuff, right? Um, that's Tesla's um, ideal, uh, in my opinion. All right. New Dog says, do you think other Bay Area companies will follow Tesla's stance and reopen? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, to tell you the truth, I think there's a culture of, um, of massive compliance, actually. And in some ways, I actually applaud Elon for questioning, right, the whole, in a sense, slow reopening of NorCal and California sense. And to put some pressure because I feel like the tendency of, is for people just to sit back and just to let things happen. And so will other Bay Area companies follow Tesla stance and uh, reopen? I don't know. I mean, maybe some will, but I think generally people are, are waiting for the government to do something. All right. Um, if the, Yeah, actually, if this doesn't bring the stock down, what will? Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, this res this whole thing hasn't resolved itself yet, right? We're still in the middle of the, what I call the ultimate showdown. And so um, we're still yet to see what the impact on the stock price uh, gets. All right, Chris Guthrie says, what odds do you give that Gavin Newsom steps in and says Tesla can reopen versus going the other way? Yeah, I think um, Gavin Newsom wants to stay out 
of the county kind of local authority because I think he kind of likes the setup where he has a California kind of law and he says, oh, counties can do whatever they want, you know, in a sense, just as long as, it, you know, it, it's reasonable. And he kind of is deferring to counties. And I think um, Gavin Newsom can step in and try to work out some behind the behind the curtain kind of the compromise but i think gavin newsom is hesitant to issue like a law or a decree right to to for tesla to reopen but we'll see i'm hoping because this stuff is getting national national exposure these politicians um it's getting closer to existential risk for them right like hey are they going to get reelected? it a lot depends on how they're per perceived in the national media and so I expect some um, lots of phone calls today, lots of action by California governor and and uh, Alameda County and lots of people involved. All right, Matt uh, Jung says, have you changed your position with Kathy Wood's model and her target with Tesla? Yeah, I still think you know they have an uh, overly optimistic target of their 2024 $7,000 price target. I've shared that in a few videos and I've worked out the numbers for you guys. Check out my video like how to value a Tesla with napkin math and I kind of go over um, to uh, how to value how to value Tesla I think reasonably. All right, Benjamin Wilson says, has Alameda County turned to the dark side? They are afraid. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Yeah, um, yeah, more of us need to get into the into the light, into love. Um, well, I'm not going to say I believe I agree with that whole statement, but it's just um, interesting. Everyone has interesting uh, comments. All right, uh, TK2X says, this order is only a misdemeanor misdemeanor he could get arrested but would be immediately released after booking most likely as a release with a citation to appear in court all right alan young says what is the actual loss for california if tesla does move tax revenue employment surrounding parts supplier also moving yeah i think it's all of the above right i mean you have um, a lot of tesla's a major employee tens of thousands of people right um, in california and you've got all the suppliers. That whole Fremont area is just around the factory is packed with Tesla suppliers. It's like Tesla town, right? And so it's a huge thing for, for their county. Um, will Alameda County recover? Sure. I mean, t California is like, it's got great weather. It's still got a lot of jobs, a lot of companies. So I don't think personally California will, you know, have this huge hit because Tesla leaves. Like t California is going to do well. They're like a top five economy in the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, it also kind of does something where new companies might be hesitant to move to California because they look at this example with Tesla and they're like, wait a minute, you know, do we want to move to a, 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 a state that is um, treats their business, businesses like that? All right, the WTF says, if, is today's price reflection of support for Musk? Yeah, I think in a sense, you know, I think investors attitude generally is like hey do what's best for the company and they see elon you know saying that hey he's not afraid to stick up and to try to you know push for something that's you know going to move things forward all right sbrs says if alameda county can shut down the economy in a microsecond why can't they undo the action more quickly yeah, man, we're talking about a lot of complexity here. Like in my opinion, and this is, you could disagree, but I think these county, local, state, federal government, they were just so slow in this crisis, right? They needed to secure testing, right? That was a big thing. Everyone botched. They needed to secure masks, right? Everything botched. They needed to get a protocol, safety protocol to get people back to work, right? Like what? what can be done like in a workplace and it's, it's taking them forever to do certain things like this right and it's a lot easier to do a complete like lockdown right and i think um but to have a smart plan of how to get people back to work right i think that's like a harder task and another thing is it boggles my mind why people can't just look to the most successful countries out there that haven't done complete lockdowns right but have yet have still opened up their economy or kept their economy open right south korea is in a great a great example right or taiwan like look at these countries that go to those countries right these officials actually figure out what they're doing right rather than just like having these blanket orders that go on for months and months right um 
All right, question. Do you think this is why Elon sold his houses and possessions? He was planning to move to new headquarters. Yeah, I think actually there's a lot of factors. I think um, Elon might actually move out of California. I wouldn't doubt it, actually. Um, he probably will move to Texas, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. Is this Has this been planned for a long time? I don't know. Maybe it's just something he was mulling, and this is just like it, the final straw or something, right? All right, question, Ben Lee. What would happen to ZEV credits and other carbon neutral credits that are provided by California? Yeah, nothing. I, they would Tesla would still continue to receive them. These credits aren't given to Tesla because they're making their cars in California um, per se. It's because they're selling their cars in California. So it's all about how many people are buying their cars in California. That's you know them getting the ZEV credits. And so Tesla would get the same amount of ZEV credits um, at all. All right, um, Ben Lee says, do you think California catered to Tesla for being one of the biggest employees in state? How would this affect California's attitude toward electric? Yeah, I think, um, you know, people say like, oh, California has done a ton of subsidies, et cetera, for Tesla. Like, yeah, when you have a big enough company like Tesla, they deserve to get some type of like, you know, incentives. But I don't think they've been like, you know, excessive in any way, right? Um, and um, yeah. Uh, I've yet to see like people really break down like what exactly are these right state incentives that that California really has given to Tesla. Um, let's say the ZEV credits, it doesn't matter where Tesla is located, right? Um, anyways, how would this affect California's future attitude toward electric? I think California is going to electric anyways. Like the attitude out here in the West Coast, um, I live in California, grew up here. I mean, it's just a much more um, open to uh, new technologies and um, electric uh, makes sense. All right, Oliver Quinn says, long term, do you think the Fremont factor is probably inefficient in comparison to their new factory designs? Yeah, I mean, it's obvious their factory designs have improved a lot over time. And um, but again, Fremont factory is a huge, huge facility. Right. And they still make cars well. Right. That's the question. They could be a little bit inefficient and you could still just remake the lines. Right. Remake the body in white. Remake the general assembly lines. Like This stuff isn't too complicated. They've got a great space. Um, it is challenging though because you know the cost of living is tough there are additional regulations but there's also advantages of having it close to your palo alto headquarters so all of this like comes into play all right how big would the loss be in q2 in case of moving the factory and what about becoming part of the s p 500 then yeah i mean if they have to move the factory completely if they have to shut down this week right and Elon says, we're out of here, right? We're stopping production in Fremont and we're moving to Nevada. We're talking about like probably something between a 500, probably over $500 million loss, maybe a, a billion dollar loss for Q2. I mean, it's not a big deal because Tesla has the money, they can recover, et cetera, right? S&P 500 is out of the question for another few quarters in that case. Um, and it's just a matter of time before you know Tesla can restart their production in Nevada. All right, Natalie says, if Elon gets arrested, how will this affect stock price? Um, yeah, actually, I think, I mean, this is, <laughs> in my opinion, the stock price goes up if Elon gets arrested. Um, just my opinion, because I think um, it's just a, it's just such a, such a crazy, you know, <laughs> crazy thing that Elon would get arrested for that. Um, people would actually, um, uh, it would, I mean, I might just buy some stock just because, you know, if that happens, just to support the stock price. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Coach, I've got tissues. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm sniffling because I've got some seasonal allergies, um, but I don't want to stop me from doing a live stream with you guys. Oh, another thing, another update. So I've got this. Um, um, I'm filming from my mobile studio, which is an RV. Um, it's a fantastic RV, actually. Um, and we're out on a trip right now, out to the coast, to Oceanside, California, checking out the the somewhat like um, dystopian blue glowing waves that are out here on the West Coast right now. It's kind of like frightening in some ways, but it's, it's uh, interesting for my kids to take a look. And so uh, this is kind of one of my first um, 
endeavors where I want to go across the country in this RV uh, with my family, actually. We're going to hit a bunch of the national parks this summer. We're going to go to Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, um, hopefully go up to Canada, hit hit probably 10 or 15 national parks. And um, I'm hoping to continue to do some broadcasting and, and sharing with you guys um, on the road. I don't know how it's going to work because I won't have internet in some of these places. I have a satellite internet dish. But anyways, that's the plan. Um, and I've been um, working at it for several months right now to make that a reality. All right, guys, um, it's already about 50 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and close up this live stream. Um, yeah, if you haven't, uh, please subscribe to the, my ch this channel. Um, we're looking at issues from different angles, from quantitative, qualitative. We're looking at it beneath the surface, trying to get into the essence and core of things. That's the whole point of this channel. And by getting clarity on issues, we're trying to get an advantage, right, into making better decisions. Go ahead. Um, so far, we've got 238 likes. If you can go ahead and um, hit the like button. Um, and let's boost that up by a couple hundred. Um, that helps the algorithms a lot. And after this video, I want to actually ask your opinion. Go ahead, write in the comments um, what you think is going to happen with Fremont situation. Is Fremont going to, you know, continue to be allowed open? Is Alameda going to crack down? What's the result, right? And how are you feeling about this regarding um, Tesla as a, an investor? All right, guys, have a great um, rest of the week, and we'll probably. Um, uh, uh, see you guys very soon this whole situation is like so fast-paced like I'm about to say hey you know I have to look at my phone like every 30 minutes to see if like Elon has tweeted something or not right and um, yeah we're gonna see what happens this this next week and we're gonna look at the implications all right good luck and we'll talk to you guys later bye